welcome to the Tuesday, August 23rd, regular business meeting of the Radnor Township School District School Board. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I want to just announce for the minutes that we have three excused absences this evening. Dr. Babson, Ms. Dunn, and Ms. Monahan are unable to join us for this meeting. But to everyone else, and since I wish them separately, welcome back. Hope everybody had a really nice summer. Hope it was relaxing. Hope it was fun. And here we go again with the start of another school year. And so I hope that uh, all, is, all is well for all concerned. Welcome back staff, welcome back community, welcome back school board colleagues, welcome back students. Really uh, glad that you're all getting ready and we hope that this upcoming school year will be one of our best uh, that we've had in the past few years. So with that, I'd like to report on executive session. The board met in executive session on the following dates, July 7th for personnel, August 16th for personnel and legal, and August 23rd for personnel and legal. And with that, I'd like to invite our students, Sammy and Sophie, up to give their report. Good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see you all, and I hope you have all had an amazing summer. Tonight's report is going to be a little shorter than most, given that the RHS students are just getting back into the swing of things after spending the summer going on adventures, working, and taking some much needed time to relax. Every year, the senior class gets to participate in an array of special traditions, beginning with painting the field house. This year, following much deliberation, the senior class has decided on marble for the theme of the field house. Who wouldn't want to see giant-sized illustrations of their favorite superheroes driving into school every morning? However, it will take a bit of work before we get to that point. Last Wednesday, from 3 to 5, the senior class began by whitewashing the structure. Due to road work, we can't start sketching or painting this week, but everyone is excited to give it their all and create something great next week. While every student prepares for the coming year by doing their summer reading, the students in band, color guard, and percussion have a little extra prepping they have to do. Yesterday was the first day of band camp, and it will continue for the rest of this week and next, not including the weekend. The students gather to practice in the evening from 6 to 9 p.m. In addition to its purpose of prepping the band and color guard to perform at their best this fall, band camp also acts as a way for the band to bond and build community. They will have a set of spirits day, each spirit days, each with a different theme, including the classic color day, where each section has their own color, turning the field into a rainbow of musicians. Another important event was the band picnic, which took place at Fenimore Woods from 3 to 5.30 this past Sunday for new band members. Finally, the band will perform a preview show for parents on August 31st and show off all of their hard work in front of a crowd on September 1st at the game against Springfield. Speaking of football games, preseason is officially in full swing. Since the first day on August 15th, every field and court on campus has been filled each morning and evening with dedicated team members. Radnor Girls Field Hockey started off their season strong, winning 7-1 in their scrimmage against Phoenixville Area School District yesterday. Their first official game will be against Upper Perkyoman High School on August 26th. As I mentioned, the first football game is September 1st against Springfield, but to prepare, the boys had a scrimmage this past Saturday at Owen J. Roberts High School. While they didn't officially keep score of the game, it was still very important as it was Coach Yider's first scrimmage as head coach of the team. The volleyball team will have their first scrimmage against Wissahickon High School on Wednesday. Finally, the girls and boys cross country teams will have their first race on September 10th at the Unionville Two Mile Bash. In addition to doing lots of running, the girls' team is making sure that preseason includes plenty of fun team bonding. Last week, the team had a bagel brunch after practice, and they plan on having a team movie night sometime soon. There are quite a few fall sports, so I will let Sophie give a rundown of the rest in her report. And thank you, everyone, for listening, and I'm now going to pass on to Sophie. Thank you, Sammy. Good evening, everyone. I hope you all had a nice and relaxing summer, and we're both glad to be back. As the start of the school year creeps closer, many high school activities have begun to prepare for their transition to the school year. While there isn't much happening, there is still some livelihood for fall sports. As Sammy previously mentioned, most teams have begun preseason and training for their upcoming season. The girls and the boys soccer finalized their teams, which included two JV teams and one varsity, and have matches this week against Notre Dame Academy for the girls and Great Valley High School for the boys. 
The boys are also hosting their annual car wash to raise money for the team this Sunday at Ratner Middle School. Next week begins the start of preseason for Ultimate Frisbee. Throughout the summer, there have been occasional pickup games where players can play for fun. While this is not their true season, the teams will both compete in a variety of games and tournaments throughout the fall and hold regular practices. The Radnor golf team has already kicked off their season at the Happy Valley Invitational, hosted by State College High School. With a team score of 307, Radnor defeated Springford and Cumberland Valley and emerged victorious. Junior Sean Mazzalupi led the way with a plus one score of 73, followed by freshman Landon Boyd, sophomore Thomas Cairns, and sophomore Michael Slinkard. The cheerleading squad has been busy with preseason cheer camp and clothing drives throughout the month of August. On August 13th, the team held their first clothing drive to raise funds for the team, where community members could donate adult and children's clothing. Later that week, the team set off for Pine Forest Cheer Camp, where multiple schools all come together to compete and perform. The squad is now back in Radnor, preparing routines for the upcoming school year. As the school year nears, the incoming freshman class of 2026 got the opportunity to learn more about the high school at Freshman Fundamentals. The day was filled with a variety of activities, branching from team building to tours. The upperclassmen could volunteer to give tours and answer questions, as well as help work some stations. Besides tours and team building, the freshmen also received their service goes, learned about the high school resources, and heard from a few guest speakers. Throughout these activities, the freshmen hopefully felt more comfortable about the transition into high school. With that, we thank you for your time tonight, and we will see you next month. Have a good evening. Thank you, Sammy and Sophie, and good luck. This is your senior year, is it not? No? Junior. Okay, junior and senior. All right, you're, you're growing up so fast, it's hard to keep track. All right, thank you very much for your report, and now I'll turn to Dr. Batchelor so he can give his report. Thank you, Mrs. Goldman, and welcome, everyone. And yes, it is the start of a new school year for us and the, as we have the new teachers coming in, but for the students and for many of our staff, it's still summer. <laughs> there, there's still some few days of summer left, um, so don't feel like you two have to stay for the whole meeting if you don't want to. We'd understand. Um, we know you're busy with everything, um, but we are excited to kick off another school year. Uh, there is a lot of excitement in the air. Tomorrow we have all our new teachers from the district will be reporting um, you know, for their induction programming. Uh, the following week on Monday, all of our staff return and we have convocation to kick off uh, the new school year on Monday. And then the week after, right after Labor Day, is when our students return. So we are excited for this school year. I uh, wanted to move on to just a few announcements I want to share with the community and share with the school board. Um, first, on tonight's agenda, uh, we do have the health and safety plan. We are required as a school district to continue with a health and safety plan uh, as part of uh, the requirement to that we receive the ESSER dollars. So we are still required to have a health and safety plan. This health and safety plan is similar to the health and safety plan that has guided us at the end of last school year, uh, but there are some changes. Uh, some of the changes are based on the changes we've received from the CDC uh, and the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia uh, as guidance. One of those changes is the removal of social distancing and also the removal of quarantine. Uh, we are no longer required uh, for students to quarantine um, in the guidance. There's no requirement for students to quarantine or staff if they are exposed to COVID. Um, we have developed as well a FAQ. There's a link on this page here to the FAQ. We will make sure this is shared on our Radnor Reader, shared out with our community and our staff. Um, when we discussed this last week at our committee meeting, one of the questions was, so what happens? Student has been exposed, do they need to stay home from school? Answer is no, they don't have to come stay home from school. Staff member is exposed to COVID, do they have to stay home and quarantine? No, based on the guidance and the changes from CHOP and CDC, they would not be required to quarantine. Um, if you test positive uh, and then after three days have no symptoms, um, do you, can you return to school? As we look at the CHOP guidance, the CHOP guidance encourages us to, for students and staff to be 24 hours fever free when they return to school. So the first piece of our guidance, we'll talk about conversations with our nurses. So any parents that do have questions, they can reach out to their building nurse um, to have any discussions. Uh, but we anticipate moving forward this school year that we will be handling COVID um, similar to the way we handle things within 
our, our current disease policies and communicable disease policy and looking for students and staff to be 24 hours fever free uh, before returning to school. So more information and it will be on our website uh, and our FAQs are on our website, but that's a piece that we will be uh, proving tonight. And then uh, uh, we do have to require to re look at our health and safety plan every six months. So every six, six months we review our health and safety plan. Back to school information. So we have tried to streamline as best we can the back to school information and have it more online. Um, please continue to give us feedback. I know as a parent how frustrating all of this is. We, um, as we try to streamline it uh, and, and go paperless, uh, it's still a lot of work. Um, if you have kids in multiple grades, you're typing in a lot of information every year. Um, so please continue to give us feedback. I wanna thank um, our communications and technology department for all their hard work to streamline this information. We continue to try to improve it each year. Uh, I think you can direct any feedback to our communications department and to Mr. Michael Petiti, uh, but just wanna remind parents who might be tuning in uh, to make sure you go on our back to school portals uh, and set up for back to school central for your students. Next month, we will be sharing a summary of our district initiatives. Uh, at our next month board meeting, we'll be sharing a summary of our district initiatives from last year. Uh, you can see up on the screen the six initiatives we had identified as a school district. And we will also next month at our board meeting be talking about our initiatives for the coming school year. Many of the initiatives that we had already in place this year will continue. Uh, some won't continue. Uh, for example, one of our initiatives this year was to implement instructional programs in response to COVID-19. Um, at this point, we're not recommending that that be initiative as much as that is part of our daily practice, being prepared to respond uh, to COVID and moving forward as a district. So we don't anticipate that as a um, as an initiative moving forward. Our multiple tier system of supports, we do, as uh, we've talked about that being a multi-year um, program and implementation and something we're very excited to continue. Um, continuation of our finishing, our accessibility and wellness project, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, further expanding our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, and I'll talk about that in just a moment as well. And then our long-term facilities plan uh, that we started working on the last few years, that will continue into the future as well. And then our wellness study, which had a focus this year on our counseling and our response to COVID. Uh, we're excited for this year to see how that'll move to um, looking at a, a homework study and also looking at, uh, as well, looking at um, our implementation of our counseling study that we finished at the end of last year. So as we go to the next slide, these are four areas that we know will continue. Next month, we'll be discussing what other initiatives um, that we may have. Uh, as we move forward as, as a district and as a community as we set our goals and initiatives for the next school year. Uh, two I just wanted to highlight on the next slide uh, is the Accessibility and Wellness Infrastructure Project. So that is a picture from, I believe, uh, I can put on my glasses, that was from 815 um, was the, the week, or was that week, 815 and 819. Um, this project, just as a reminder, um, was a project that began when the board recognized um, two things. We recognized that we knew we had an aging infrastructure. We knew we had bleachers that needed to be replaced. We also knew that we had a serious accessibility issue uh, at our high school. Uh, and thanks to the cooperation of, of our board, our community, um, recognizing the need to make sure that all of our students could access, and not just our students, but our community and grandparents could access all our facilities. Um, we embarked on a, a project to make our fields and that area of our building accessible, uh, wheelchair accessible with ramps, um, accessible also uh, as we look at the building structure, um, the, the concession stands, the bleachers. Uh, I'm really proud of, of what we've done with this project and where it's going, but like any project, we are now coming down to the wire and we're, we've been focusing on a, a completion date of November. Uh, we are still aiming for that completion date. Uh, I'm gonna take it as a good sign that I don't see Mr. Dolan in the audience, that, he, that means he's on the project working right now. Um, we did luckily have had many of our contractors, especially when the turf was rolling out several weeks ago, work through the weekend uh, to complete the turf implementation. I shared a letter with the community about some of the delays that we encountered over the last year and how some of those delays are impacting us now as we move forward. Um, but many of those 
delays also became opportunities for us to begin working on another area of the project. So every time we hit a delay where there was a where there was this change with the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, over um, mineral counts in dirt, or we found that there was water lines misplaced, um, every time we hit a delay, thanks to the hard work of our operations team, um, our contractors that we're working with, our, our um, construction management firm and our architect, we began working in different areas to keep the project going to be shooting for that deadline of uh, November for completion. Uh, we had hoped that we would have started the school year with our uh, fall activities being on the field. We are now shooting for October um, for everyone to be on Prevo Field, but I'm happy to say that this past week, uh, the field has been able to be used for practices. So the football team was able to practice this week. We anticipate we're trying to figure out how to get our marching band and color guard on the field as well. Our challenge right now is that during construction during the day, we can't be on the field. But in the afternoon, when the, when the work is complete for the day, on uh, the afternoon, um, we've been able to work out uh, rare, safe avenues for our students to access the turf and use it for practice. Um, this, again, is a project that encompasses, uh, it, you know, our, our, we knew our turf field was 13 years old and needed to be replaced, and our track needed to be replaced. Uh, but this is a project that also encompasses not only the accessibility, but the recognition that our facility, our gymnasium wasn't air conditioned, our pool area had no accessibility, we are adding an elevator in the pool area, we're upgrading our pool ventilation system uh, and the pool shell and the pool deck that again was needed and uh, a much needed upgrade uh, to our facility. So we're really excited for November. Um, we really are, are, and we're hopeful, keeping our fingers crossed for November. Um, we know with projects, there still could be delays we could hit, uh, but we want to just thank um, our whole community uh, and especially our students uh, for their patience. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy for students, especially if it's your senior year. Uh, this, this project has been going on. Before that, we had COVID. It's not easy for our kids. Um, but our kids have been really great and flexible, and we're excited for this new facility and the accessibility that it's going to bring for all of our community and our kids. So more to come, but wanted to just highlight the status of where we are with the project moving forward. Go to the next slide. Just want to mention one of our district initiatives uh, that we're really excited about this school year, uh, and that's been our district-wide staff book study, uh, Belonging Through a Culture of Dignity. Uh, we are working directly with the authors of this book, uh, the authors have started to work with the school board and the administrative team to look at belonging and dignity and how through belonging and dignity all of our students and staff can feel included and valued in our district. Um, it has been a, a great opportunity for us to take the next step as we look at so many of the initiatives that we've had in the area of equity, making sure that we're unlocking the potential in all of our students, uh, that this book and, and, and what this book is about uh, we felt was a, a, a great um, next step for us as a district. We're excited to see that everyone in the district is involved in this book study, uh, and we'll be sharing more information about it in the coming weeks, and we're excited to have the author of, uh, of uh, Belonging Through a Culture of Dignity to be with all our teachers when we kick off a new school year. The next slide, we have um, just the back-to-school events. They, we are getting very busy, as our students just mentioned. Uh, there's a lot going on in the district as the new school year begins, so just want to share with school board members and community some of those events. Uh, I'd like to give a big thank you uh, to uh, three families uh, who made a very generous donation. It's on this tonight's agenda. It's a donation for a new sound system um, for our gymnasium. Uh, the parents identified and saw that there was a need um, they helped uh, research what are the best systems by visiting other schools, working with our athletic director and our high school administration, uh, and then donated uh, not only the dollars, but donated their time and energy to help identify the system and help us purchase the system. So I want to thank Jeff and Lon Rosenblum, Ryan and Terry Hickey, and Kit and Christine Mueller uh, for their very generous donation. Uh, our district is so thankful for the support of our community uh, and it's donations like this that make a big difference. So we really appreciate uh, what they've done. We have a welcome tonight. We told him he did not need to be here tonight, so we'll have other opportunities to uh, uh, acknowledge it for the board to meet. But we have a new assistant principal, uh, John Wagner. Uh, John Wagner uh, replaces uh, Heather Esposito, who uh, 
um, received a, a principalship in another district. We were so excited and wished her well in June in her new position. And we welcome John Wagner as our new assistant principal who will be at Ithan Elementary and Radnor Elementary. And then we do have a retirement we want to acknowledge tonight. One of our administrators who's here with us, uh, who has always uh, been here with us at our board meetings, um, Penny uh, Tansy is retiring. And Penny is one of those uh, administrators as the assistant business administrator who you might not see always um, you know, in, in the limelight or presenting, but she is somebody behind the scenes that makes sure work gets done in the district. We are so appreciative of all of Penny's years of service, um, Penny's incredible work ethic, uh, her can-do attitude, and all that she does to make things happen within our business office behind the scenes. Uh, Penny, we appreciate your years of service, and we wish you well uh, with your retirement. Uh, I do have a gift that I'll present to you at the end of the meeting. Uh, on behalf of the school board and the administrative team, we wanted to wish you well, and thank you for all that you've done for the district. And then moving on to the next slide is I just wanted to share very quickly a short video. Um, I thank the communications department and uh, Nikki Crone for putting together uh, a, a video right after freshman fundamentals. So we just wanted to share, uh, get a little excitement about when our freshmen returned uh, to the building last week for freshman fundamentals, which is an opportunity for the freshmen to come in and learn a little bit about the building before the students. Um, all the students are back at the high school. So this is just a quick little summary of what took place at Freshman Fundamentals. and our students who came back, the upperclassmen, uh, for putting together Freshman f Fundamentals. And we are excited for the beginning of another school year. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you very much, Dr. Bachelor. I love those videos. <laughs> I'm, I just think that they, what is it, a video is worth more than a thousand words. I know I'm improvising on the expression there, but I got to tell you, I'm a real sucker for those videos, and I think they're wonderful. So thank you to our communications department for putting those together and bringing to life all the wonderful things that are going on in this district in the way that only videos can sometimes. With that, I'd like to open up the floor for public comment. As per board policy six, meetings and public participation, the board provides an opportunity at each regular board meeting for eligible participants to comment on matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are or may be before the board. Community members may make one comment per public comment period for no more than four minutes per comment. 
Revisions to Policy 6 were adopted by the board at the May 24, 2022 regular business meeting and will go into effect on September 1st. The changes to public participation were designed to enhance the ability for Radnor community members to make public comment in their own voices, either in person or by telephone recording when circumstances prevent a community member from attending the board meeting. The board and district administration have discussed these changes publicly since the beginning of the policy revision process in February of 2022 and will continue to advertise these changes prior to and for some time after they've gone into effect on September 1st. If you have any questions about how this change will work, please visit rtsd.org backslash board for more information. And with that, is there anyone who would like to make public comment this evening? Not seeing anybody in person. Mr. Petiti, do we have any emailed public comment for the last round of email? I do have one. Um, does it have to be, it, remind me, the change in, was there a change in the procedure where this has to be related to the agenda, or is this any subject? We, we any can, subject. Okay, then I have one. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, this was not sent to the board questions or comments email. It was sent directly to me, so I don't believe that that technically would qualify unless we want to. Looks like it's meant to be read tonight, but it wasn't sent to the correct email address. Um, in the event that that person wanted to just communicate with you personally, I think we better err on the side of caution, and if they want to resubmit to public comment later, if they happen to be listening to this meeting, we could read it at the end. So perhaps you want to just give out the email address in case that yes. person is watching. Yes. You could forward this to board comments at rtsd.org. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. And we will move from there into the report from board committees. And we will start with actually the curriculum committee. And Ms. Ms. Dunn, who is the, I'm sorry, you'll, there may be a little stop and start here. There is a new sound system in the room. Thanks to the commissioners. It's supposed to be new and enhanced, but it's Beeping. maybe a little glitchy right now. So if, if you hear a few extra beeps, <laughs> just bear with us as we get used to this new system. Ms. Goldman, I can give the comment. I believe I'm the only board member that was in attendance at that meeting. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. You're okay. welcome to give it. Um, so I was not prepared for this. I did not know that Ms. Dunn and Dr. Babson were not going to be here, but um, I'll give you a quick rundown of what occurred. So the curriculum committee met on August 16th. There are a number of items on the consent agenda that went through committee, um, and I'm going to highlight some of the, um, I think, more important ones, but I'll kind of quickly go through all of them. So the health and safety plan did come before us, and then on your agenda, there is a lengthy list of um, items under 9.03. All of those contracts came before the curriculum committee. Um, we asked questions about all of them. I do want to highlight a couple of them. The third one down, the Rensselaer contract, is a new contract. It's a three-year contract. Um, commitment to move to STARS 360 Freckle, which is a math and um, language arts program. And we're moving, well, this was after a year-long study. We're moving away from some of the assessments that we previously gave in the district and moving towards um, different ones. And those contracts are on here. And it includes um, basically this list of 12 different contracts came before us. So it, it actually is a significant increase in expenditure to computer programs and testing that will help us identify where students are. But these things were felt to be necessary by the year-long um, committee work that went into it, which included administrators and teachers, and they all felt that this was a better way to go. Um, and one of the main reasons was that it will save students testing time, but it will also give us more detailed information on where students are 
in their academic progress. Um, and then the rest of these contracts, um, I don't think anything really stands out as um, a major change. I should probably just mention linked, Link It, which will be also a new um, data integration um, software and a contract for um, actually a substantial amount of money for digni Dignity Consulting. Um, and let's see. Also, we did discuss um, the grant that Dr. Babson, Dr. Batchelor just mentioned came through committee. And I believe there was one more thing also on the consent agenda. Oh, yes, the uh, high school cheerleading trip. So all of those things did come through committee. I encourage you to watch it. It was um, a lot of information about pretty significant changes in testing and sort of data management and how we're going to do that both K through 5 and also at the secondary level. So. Um, there's a lot of information within all those contracts embedded in the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Solomon. And we'll move to facilities. Ms. Stern, as vice chair, is going to do that report. Thank you, Ms. Goldman. The facilities committee met on August 16th. And as Dr. Batchelor highlighted in his superintendent report, we did get an update on the wellness and accessibility project. And then the bulk, the rest of our meeting was spent on accessibility uh, project change orders. We have three ratifications on the consent agenda. One is a small credit and the other two uh, were, uh, were of a level to be approved by the committee so they're on the, the agenda for ratification. And then there were two change orders that require board approval and they are on the agenda as well. <clears throat> Both are related to the pool area and the outside of the pool, uh, outside of the building near the pool. Um, the one is to add uh, push plates for accessibility. It, don't really know why. Well, it, it was good that we caught it when we did, but this is all about adding accessibility to the building and these push plates are going to increase that accessibility. And then in the process of uh, working on the pool, which as Dr. Batchel mentioned, we did a major renovation to the pool. It was discovered that the pool deck drains and the piping system is in much worse shape than we uh, realized. and. Now, while everything is torn up, is really the time to spend the money and uh, put the pipe back in place and the, and the infrastructure for the pool. And so those two items are on the agenda for approval tonight. And then we will be meeting in uh, September. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stern. And finance, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mrs. Goldman. Uh, the Finance Committee covered a number of financial action items that you will find in Section 9 of your agenda. Uh, Mrs. Solomon did uh, discuss uh, some of the contracts under Section 9.03, which went through curriculum. The remainder of those agreements went through the Finance Committee. In addition, we had the usual disposals and financial reports. Uh, many of the contracts that went through finance were renewals of contracts we've seen in previous years. Also, there are a number of housekeeping items. I did want to highlight a few um, items, two of which Dr. Batchelor already covered in his superintendent's remarks. Uh, number one, of course, we do want to acknowledge the donation of the sound system for the main gym. Um, Mr. Mueller did attend the Finance Committee meeting, so if you were looking for a little bit more information about the process that the three families engaged in and some details about what the new sound system will look like, um, you can tune into the Finance Meeting recording to hear a little bit more about that. Um, of course, we also did discuss and acknowledge uh, Penny Tanzi's uh, impending retirement, that being her last uh, committee meeting with us for uh, the district. And uh, Mrs. Solomon had a number of very nice remarks. As our most experienced board member, uh, Mrs. Solomon offered a great deal of perspective on the stability um, that uh, Mrs. Tansy brought to us uh, over the many years of her service. Um, so uh, again, the board thanks you, uh, Penny, for everything. Um, one thing that uh, Mrs. Tansy will miss out on is that the um, business um, administration is going to engage in a project, which is a pretty substantial project, to change our accounting and human resources software to give us a lot more functionality than we've had. We have a very outdated, is that a fair way to describe it, system um, for finance that is not well integrated with our human resources systems. That's going to change. Um, this, is, uh, this does require a lot of work. 
um, for our, from our business department, um, a $250,000 contract, which is a budgeted expenditure that was in the budget we passed um, last spring. And thereafter, moving forward, we'll have a lot more functionality. So um, I know it'll be a lot of work, but we're looking forward to seeing the results of that project, which is long overdue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. And for policy, Ms. Duffy. Yeah, the policy committee did not meet in August, but we are scheduled to meet on Tuesday, September 13th. It uh, doesn't mean that the policy um, administrative team hasn't been working hard over the summer. They've actually been looking at the policy review cycle, which we'll hear more about in September. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And Government Relations and Communications Committee, Dr. Babson is the chair. He's not here this evening, but that committee did not meet in August, but they are on the schedule to meet in September. So with that, we'll move into the consent agenda. Although board action is required, it is generally unnecessary to hold discussion on these items. With the consent of all board members, they are therefore grouped and approval is given in one motion. In the event a board member wants to discuss any item, the board president will move it to an appropriate place on the agenda. Does anybody want to pull anything from consent? Seeing none, then I will take a motion to entertain the consent agenda. So moved. Ms. Solomon, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Duffy. All the, any discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand and saying aye. That's a unanimous six to nothing vote on the consent agenda. Thank you very much. And that will take us to reports from board liaisons and community announcements. So for Delaware County Community College, Ms. Solomon. Um, I just received notification that there will be a trustee vacancy at Delaware County Community College. And just to re-explain, I think I've mentioned this before, the college has the liaison committee, which are, which is comprised of school board members from the uh, sponsoring school districts, but the trustees are actually what would be considered the equivalent of our school board for the community college. So it, this is a, um, it, it's a very important position. They have somebody that is retiring and not seeking to renew their contract. So it will be a six year term, I believe. It will commence on January 1st, 2023. Um, and so, I have information also, the district has information. If there's anyone out there that's interested, this would be open to anyone in our community because we are a sponsoring district. So you don't need to be involved in Radnor School District per se in any way to do this. You could be a professor or you know work in education or, or have financial um, expertise that they could use. So this is open to any community member that might find that um, an interesting or a good use, good match to their skills. Um, also, just for board members, they will be hosting their um, annual dinner. I don't have a date for that yet. It's typically at the end of October. I'll keep you posted. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Solomon. The Delaware County Intermediate Unit, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Um, the Delaware County Intermediate Unit did not meet in July. However, we did have a board meeting on August 3rd and committee meetings on August 10th. Um, the one item I would like to highlight is that the DCIOU asked me to pass along that they are hiring. Um, they're looking for uh, to fill a number of different positions. Um, this is, as we have talked about many times on this board, a period of great transition in public education, and the DCIU is looking for great people to help serve the needs um, of our entire county and the students therein. Um, there is also the possibility of an up to $2,500 hiring incentive if you do, in fact, join the team at the DCIU. So if you go to the DCIU website, www.dciu.org, right on the front page there is information about open positions. And I would encourage anyone you know um, who may have interest in that to take a look. Uh, the board will meet again on September 7th with committee meetings to follow on the 14th. Great, thank you, Mr. Moore. And for the Pennsylvania School Boards Association, Ms. Duffy. Yes, I just have an update on the PSBA legislative platform process. Um, as you recall, back in July, we submitted four proposals for consideration to the platform committee, and that committee is going to be meeting on Saturday, September 17th. We've reached out to the committee to let them know that we 
would like to advocate for our position so um, I will be doing that unless someone else feels really strongly and wants to um, come forth I'm happy to you know, um, share the platform but um, that will occur on Saturday September 17th and from just as from that meeting they will determine what um, they will be moving forward to the delegates assembly in November and that will set the legislative platform for the following year excellent thank you and thank you for your advocacy on our behalf are there any other community announcements anybody wants to make I would yeah I just wanted to um, let people know that on Saturday September 10th the streets of South Wayne will be filled with music from 1130 to 6 it's uh, we close down the streets and there'll just be a wonderful afternoon of free music and we hope everyone in the community will join us Great, thanks, Ms. Stern. Anybody else have any other community announcements they'd like to make? Okay, then we'll move into new business. Does anybody have any new business they'd like to raise? Seeing none, we're going to move into board announcements. On Tuesday, September 13th at 5 o'clock, we will hold a policy meeting. At 6 o'clock will be finance, and at 7 o'clock will be government relations and communications. Those will all be held in the ground floor conference room of the administration building at 135 South Wayne Avenue, open to the public. Tuesday, September 20th at 5 o'clock will be our next curriculum committee meeting, at, followed at 6.30 by the facilities committee. Again, that's going to be held in the conference room at the Radnor Township School District administration building. These are all public meetings. Tuesday, September 27th at 7 o'clock, will be our next regular business meeting here in the Radnor Shire room of the Radnor Township Municipal Building. And that brings us to our second round of public comment. As per board policy six, meetings and public participation, the board provides an opportunity at each regular board meeting for eligible participants to comment on matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are or may be before the board. Community members may make one comment per public comment period for no more than four minutes per comment. Revisions to policy six were adopted by the board at the May 24th, 2022 regular business meeting and will go into effect on September 1st, 2022. The changes to public participation were designed to enhance the ability for Radnor community members to make public comment in their own voices, either in person or by telephone recording when circumstances prevent a community member from attending the board meeting. The board and district administration have discussed these changes publicly since the beginning of the policy revision process in February of 2022 and will continue to advertise these changes prior to and for some time after they've gone into effect on September 1st. If you have any questions about how this change will work, please visit rtsd.org backslash board for more information. Do we have any public comment in the room this evening? I see. Welcome, Mr. King. Good evening, Madam President and board members and community members. I just want to say welcome back uh, to uh, the start of a new school year. So on behalf of RTA and all the professionals and teachers, we're looking forward to beginning a new school year and hopefully a more normal school year where COVID might be in the rearview mirror, although COVID is still with us in a reality. Uh, but we do trust, uh, and I say this genuinely, we do trust in Dr. Batchelor uh, with his expertise uh, uh, over the past couple of years to keep everybody he healthy and safe should there be uh, outbreaks uh, of COVID that do uh, materialize. But let's hope that that's, you know, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen. Otherwise, we're looking forward to just getting back in the classrooms with our students and doing what we love to do best, which is teaching the students of Gradner Township School District. So I just want to say also uh, express gratitude again for the contract extension uh, from, from last June as well. So again, gratitude and thanks. Thank you. And, and we welcome you and all the members of our TEA back as well, our entire staff. Hope everybody, as I said earlier in the meeting, had a really happy, restful, healthy, hopefully, summer. And we look forward to a much more typical school year this year. And thank you to everyone for their Herculean work over these past few years. And let's hope that this year is a little bit more typical than we've had uh, in the recent past. With that, uh, Mr. Petiti, no, okay. I assume you'll write back to that person and let them know. We didn't want to mm -hmm. risk violating their... Yes, I wrote back to them letting them know where to send it and I haven't received that. Okay, terrific, thank you. Um, and they can, they're welcome to forward the email to the board too if they don't want to wait till the next meeting. So.
So with that, I am going to call for a motion to adjourn. Don't all raise so your hands. So moved. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Solomon and second. Sec Thank you, Mr. Juvelier. All those in favor? That's a unanimous okay. six nothing. Have a nice evening, everyone.